and welcome to what women and you men need to know today. <laughs> My great friend Ann Kuzniak joins me, and we've been friends for so long, uh, we'd have to both take <laughs> off our shoes and to count yeah. how many years that would be, so That's we won't true. even begin to talk about that, but she's going to talk to us about a very important subject. You know, in January, we think about cleaning out, <laughs> cleaning out and cleaning up and making new uh, deals with ourselves about how yeah. we're going to keep things straighter and I've even heard them talking on TV lately about how we can unclutter our minds and I don't know that yeah. mine can be uh, uncluttered or decluttered or whatever well, but they say and stuff helps they your say mind. they say it can happen so I'm I'm going to entertain that thought anyway <laughs> right. but there are a lot of areas in our lives that are totally um, that are too cluttered too cluttered I, I i know that a lot of you are going mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. i, I yeah. think i feel that <laughs> i know i do myself and Anne is going to help us to um we'll talk about some talk possibilities about, <laughs> talk about getting a handle on how we might and, and it's not anything we're going to finish by the end of january nor probably the end of February, but some things that we can begin to work on, right, Anne? That's why I look at it as yeah. a as a process. Yes. And any time you change your mindset, which this requires a change of mindset, then it's a process. Yes. Most of us just don't do it overnight. Because it takes what twenty one days to even change establish a, a new yeah. habit. So we know that's going to take us right out of January. So. Well, and then I think the thought is, you know, always in the, the the big stores they have the boxes. Right after Christmas, they put out all the new boxes, you know, for your storage needs. Mm -hmm. You're going to reorganize. And how much time do we spend reorganizing junk and putting it in something pretty? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and and what we would probably do better is to sort through and get rid of a lot. But that requires time. And it requires thinking. Yes. And yeah, it does require time, but there's, and there's different schools of thought that I've been reading a lot about this lately. One of the first things, books I read, because I heard of it, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, Marie Kondo from Japan. Mm -hmm. Now, that, if you haven't heard of that or seen it, it's, it's uh, Hold that book up, if you will, yeah, and, uh, Rick will get a, a close-up of that. And uh, it here. it's a small, it's a small book. Let, let's let's hold it up. There we go. Okay. And he can he can um, zoom in on that. And um, this is the first book Anne says she read because I've heard a lot about it. And and she is she's Japanese, but she has changed a lot. She has calls it the KonMari method of tidying up and that's her term um, she says on the back to a whole new level <laughs> oh to a whole new level <laughs> whole new and i level. keep thinking okay now she is from japan mm -hmm. and japanese traditionally have smaller units that yes. they live in yes. kind of you know apartments and things like that smaller homes and our children have visited japan a number of times and we've hosted people from japan so it's it's a different lifestyle to a great extent but we can learn from any culture and she takes it her thought is a major declutter at one time where you actually spend a great deal of time really going now with the massive size of american homes and, the, and even they, your three bedroom two bath ranch that's still massive compared to most of the world right and we have stuff everywhere and every not everybody but a lot of us most, have most everyone well, americans we mm -hmm. We can buy, we have disposable income, or we've been gifted a lot of stuff, and it's everywhere. Now, a couple of things she does, she, she's, she'll take it by categories, and you can start wherever. Not, But she gathers, like, say for clothing, and I was mentioning this mm -hmm. before we went there, she said, gather all of your clothing in one place. Now, she said, put it in the floor. Well, not, I'm old and I don't want to get down the floor, but, you know, get it all in one place and sort through it. She said, hold every item and decide whether you really like it or not. Yeah, how, what shape it's in, if it's mm -hmm. in good enough shape. You know, we all have stuff that needs to go in the rag bag. Yes, and things that we never, ever, ever wear. wear. And why are we holding on to them? I don't know. We might. We might possibly we need might. them someday. Mm -hmm. Or they were such a good deal. 
Or, and they still have the tags on them. How many of us have stuff in our closet with tags still on the closet? Or it doesn't fit, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, for those, who, you know, for those who uh, change sizes occasionally, mm-hmm. you know, you may have a closet full of two or three different sizes. A lot of people do, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that's not uncommon. But even in that, and as I've, I'm working on it. I, it's a work in progress, but I have gone through a lot of my things. She suggests emptying out your closet and you empty out the space. And then just put back in the things that you truly love, that give you joy, that look good on you, and not that stuff. You know, I only need that occasionally, but I'm not. I don't like it, mm-hmm. so I, I try not to wear it. Get rid of it. It's hard. I know Helen's a clothes hound. I've known well, that for I, years. <laughs> I, I am, and I admit that. But I tell you one thing that kind of goes along with this that helped when when um, we did the. Uh, had new flooring put down. Ah, uh-huh, yes. Everything had to go out of the house. Oh, I my mean, goodness. It, you know, everything had to go out of the house. That's a, a wonderful opportunity to just put back in the things that you want. So I got a pod and put uh-huh. on the driveway. So mm-hmm. as everything went out and into the pod, I didn't have time at that. Right. At I the know going how that goes. out mm-hmm. because you're just trying to get meet the deadline right to, to get in. it out so the workman can come in but i tried when i brought it back in to really look at it really look at it and i that was an opportunity and the other thing that i found mm-hmm. this worked for me and it might right help. everybody's different once you're separated from it it's easier that's exactly right and and even if you don't have a pot or whatever mm-hmm. and for a lot of us we have a lot of clothes there could be something else we'll you know, she suggests maybe starting with clothes because that's something you need, you use every day. Mm-hmm. You look, you, you, you gather, you get stuff out of your drawers, you get your shoes all laid out, and then you really, you know, these were meaningful at one time, but they, they don't fit anymore. They hurt my feet, or I wouldn't be caught dead in them. If they're decent, pass them on. Either give them away or have a sale. Um, what if so somebody can be using them? They don't just sit languishing in your closet mm-hmm. To get molded or mildewed or whatever, and they're no good. There's to, no good to anybody when right. that happens. And if your if your closet's airy and you go in and out, you can get in and out. It it moves the air in there, and you're much less likely to have mildew mm-hmm. and mold. You know, right. from our days of extension, right. we know we, that. We do know that. <laughs> yes. But it, it was fascinating to see this, and she's she suggests holding every item. Now the other thing, when you have all these, when you look at it spread out like that, like I started with blouses or tops. And how many T-shirts do we have? If you're a volunteer in the community, you get one for this or that. My husband's a runner. He gets race T-shirts. Now, I didn't try to do him his, and that's one thing you might want to think about. If you have a family living at home, you can't control other people. Now, you think even kids, you know, are hard. But to change it. But if you get your stuff in order and they see how much better you function and what a burden's been lifted off of you, then they might... Fun. Start trying that. Mm-hmm. But you get it out of your blouse and you look, oh, well, I have five green blouses that are almost the same shade or tops or whatever. Can I get rid of those? And some of them would be a little frayed here and there. Mm-hmm. So move those out of your wardrobe. So you just started with one, not all clothes, just one. What, she suggests pulling yeah. all of it. But mm-hmm. it, again, ma- Americans have massive amounts right. of stuff. Right. And then others, there's a lot of other people who talk about minimalism that was just her method take it all out you actually go through it and decide how much you actually need do we need a hundred shirts blouses tops no because and you you count you Mm -hmm. if you gather all your stuff up yeah a lot of people have more than that and i i have mine by color in the closet, so right. if I need a red right. top, yeah. I go to the red section. Yeah, and I do too. I mean, that's and I separated mine by short sleeve and long sleeve, but that and but I you know have right. that and uh, but that does make you think. And then the other after you really separate now belts, I decided I really don't like belts anymore, and so I have one I think or two, but I got rid of all those others that I never wear. And I, we have a yard sale at our church every year, so I just have a, a place in the attic that if I see I'm not going to use something, I'll put it up there, mm-hmm. and then I have massive amounts of stuff. Or if that's not option for you, get rid of it. Get it out of the house right away. Mm-hmm. 
take it to the Goodwill. I don't know what's around here. Attic treasures. Attic, attic treasures. Attic. Somebody that recycles those for other people to purchase or give away. Yes. I, um, I dropped off a box on the way up here this morning to um, Attic Treasures because it was things I had just, as you said, through. I had just collected and stacked up and I had a box full and I just... When I got that box full, I just dropped it off on the way up this well, morning. And it frees up closet space for what you want and use. Now, one of the suggestions, and I think this is Joshua Becker. This is another another one, um, the more of less. Joshua Becker, He, I, I mark and I write in my books as I study my movement. That finger's the more of less. Um, he talks about our possessions owning us. And sometimes they do. If we, if you can't even get in your closet or your bedroom for all the stuff, then our possessions are dominating our life, and we are not free to do the things we really would like to be doing. You know, you might want to go out biking this afternoon, but oh, you got a mountain of stuff to pile. You can't even get through to find your biking clothes or what you need. Mm -hmm. You know, your helmet and that kind of thing. Or you've lost something and you've spent. Uh, that's so frustrating. Yes. That yes. is very, very frustrating when you lose something. Uh, an item of clothing or something you know and you can't find it and, and you know you have it and then you go out and have to buy another one it's, of course as soon as you've bought the other one, it. it shows up and I never hang something over something else oh, I wow, never do that oh, because yeah. that's unless I'm traveling and then I put an outfit right. together or something like right. that but. but because that's for sure a problem in the making right but I have lost something you know oh, from time we all to time have. And that is just, that makes me furious. It's frustrating. Yes, it's very, very frustrating. Very frustrating. But I, I just thought that was a, and that may be something that's easy for you. Pick something that, you know, some category that you have an excess amount of. Books. If you're a reader, okay, we're both home economists. That was our old term, right. family consumer science people now. But we had cookbooks. I have Hundreds. And I love cookbooks. I, mean, I read them like novels. I mean, I love cookbooks. My 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 viewers all know how much <laughs> I love cookbooks. And people gift you with cookbooks because of that. And I buy cookbooks. I love cookbooks. But it's, how many I cookbooks can't. can you actually use? Or do you use anymore? Don't you have those same old recipes that are all splattered and covered in... Yes, and I have... I could probably pick out... Mm, a half dozen actual books, books that I that I go to on a regular basis. On a regular basis. And now, young people, I'm finding my daughter-in-law's daughters don't want cookbooks. They go on the internet. Yeah. They look up recipes if they want something. But they don't have those old. Recipes I'm still, on those. you know, a paper and I person. Am, Even if I went on the internet, I light, I print it off. My brain was because I write when I make it. I write down, oh, it was good, or I need to tweak this, or whatever. Or I change the amount. Yeah, right. Of, some seasoning I put in it, yes, but, I do and, too. And it depends on your lifestyle. But think about all those cookbooks. I know I did clean out my, when we built our house, I have a big shelf yes. of cookbooks. I took 75 to the library. After I gave away, I took them to church and asked the lady if I wanted them. And I took 75 cookbooks to the library, and they were thrilled. So they'll sell real well in our library mm -hmm. book sale. Well, I did delete some from my shelf. But you can't tell it. Well, and I, I now I have room to display some other stuff because I and I know I still need to pare down. It's it's to me it's not a one time thing, but everybody's individual about it. Um, but that's an area I know for home economists. You know, people would give them to us, mm -hmm. we would buy them, we'd mm -hmm. go places, and they were talking Every, about everywhere. Somebody had a cookbook, and I always came home with well, it. He bought it to help them out. Right. But I know when we were in Extension, and we both retired from there. But when I left Extension, I had to buy two bookshelves just to take home the books, the books. and stuff I had accumulated mm -hmm. not all cookbooks right. just all kinds of books related mm -hmm. to home and family that yeah. we gave them from you know got information from right. back then it was before the internet was so big right. but I still use those books I, I know there's a few that I books. right but and and my son is a marvel at this he's what 32 now my youngest son yes. and uh they live a minimalist lifestyle there's there's my son and his wife, and they have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. They live in an 800-square-foot house, two bedrooms, one bathroom, kitchen, and a living room. And they, and it's not cluttered. It's, they really think in terms of what comes in, and if something comes in, something has to go. 
but it's so freeing. They can pick up and go. It's no big deal. Um, I don't know that they are. They have just sold that house and are moving. He hates it because he walks to work and things like that because it's an in-town house, and that's not practical for a lot of us with no public transportation right. and stuff. But he's truly adopted a minimalist lifestyle, and, and because of what he's doing, I'm, I'm really, really... He'll come to our house and look in our pantry and say, Oh, my, Mama, it looks like a grocery store. Right. <laughs> and, and that there are a lot of things that contribute to that different mindset, too. Right. I mean, a, a lot of things. And um, do you think this is something, This uh, what we're talking about, this, this term that we're... Uh, referring to is is called the minimalist lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this is something more young people are going to employ as a a way of living, Anne? Or, or what? I'm hoping so. And and I'm and what I'm thinking it's not that you have to live in the tiny houses. You know that's a big thing now. Right. Yes. And you, that's appalling to think about coming from a a house, a bigger house with all the stuff that's it's full of. But but you look at the people people a lot of people and when they retire they move into campers mm -hmm. i say campers you know track you know trailer things right. that they are and they travel right. and everything i mean they have everything they need in one travel trailer very efficiently arranged very, you know you don't have 15 pots right you might have one or two right and this kind of thing um it's just a different way of thinking we don't have to live that way but we can choose to not be burdened by all of our stuff uh, and that that really is an issue today how many of you if you're cooking if you're still cooking a lot how many pots and pans do you have and how many pots and pans do we actually need you have your favorites yes i go to one to cook pasta or whatever and that my bill's aunt gave me years and years ago nothing fancy but that's my go-to pot mm -hmm. for that and i have a little pot that i make my tea in and you know but but the other thing, too, is if we get a new pot, you know, that's the big deal. The copper pots right now, the copper and the different ones they sell, they're just wonderful. Every mm -hmm. year there's a new one that's wonderful. Right. Then get rid of your old stuff. If you bring a new set in. And that's what I away. used to do. Uh, you know, that's what I was doing. I'm, I might have gotten a little slack doing that. But, <laughs> but I was doing that. When I would get uh, new dishes or new anything i would take the the ones which were still good and put them in the box and take them to attic treasures because they supply families with right a, a kind of and, a and i basic, take ours to our, our women's shelter for domestic abuse if you you're cleaning the, out sheets towels right. anything to help set up a household that's, there's a lot of agencies that can use those. that's what attic treasures supports Is, okay our our uh, women's shelter so well, I mean, they give them a, a basic set of everything to, start to get out. started so when i would get something new i would you know box up the stuff that's still good now right. I, I, I stress that because i've worked in emergency situations and you want to help people that have been tornado victims right. and things. don't send them junk right and one of the things that i discovered again working in the community like i do and volunteering so many things we do the canned food drives, mm -hmm. and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of food pantries and things like that. But if you have access to a community food bank, the Chattanooga Food Bank has actually has an right. office in Dalton. That's where I'm from. Then you could give them $5. Instead of buying $5 worth of canned goods at the grocery store, you could give them $5, and they can multiply that 25 times. You know, like that would be $25 worth of stuff that they can purchase with their purchasing power. Right, because they can get it much less than we can buy it at the regular grocery store right and the other thing like in an emergent emergency situation like the, the tornado we had mm -hmm. in ringo that was mm -hmm. so terrible right I, i've talked to the people who actually worked i mean and we did some stuff too but it, immediately people were sending tons of clothing and mm -hmm. somebody sent an old dis, discarded basically christmas tree now, just junk junk stuff you're trying to get rid of but don't that's a true problem in an emergency situation. Right. They do need certain things. And but they don't need junk. Normally, but they don't need your junk, and they don't need stuff that you wouldn't be caught dead wearing. Right. You know, the holy T-shirts and stuff like right. that. They need things that are good quality, things right. that, that, that yeah. can be used right away and right. don't have to be repaired or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you who sew, and I used to sew a lot. We both did. I 
this generation I grew up so when I made stuff and I used to make a lot of things for my kids um, I'm not sewing as much anymore so I've cleaned out a lot of my sewing stuff mm -hmm. and I found there's a ministry yes. that is teaching sewing to people so I, might, I think I had five pairs of, of pinking shears and stuff like that and things to give away to people who can use them I took a, a whole load once of those extra mm -hmm. sewing extras. supplies and it was amazing people before i could even get it put down people were into it into it right so uh and it, and it brings knitting, you joy knitting uh supplies and stuff. supplies oh and, and i know i work I, you know elderly folks some mm -hmm. of them just can't afford yarn right and you may have a stash sitting in a mm -hmm. back closet or somewhere or you are you just don't have time to knit or crochet anymore right. There's a lot of senior citizens' places of ask first. Don't just go dump stuff there, but ask if they can right. use that. Some of the nursing homes, they mm -hmm. do things. I took, I cleaned out all these puzzles. We had four kids, you know, and we had all the neighborhood kids were always at the house. So we had tons of, like, jigsaw puzzles. Mm -hmm. Well, we just don't do that anymore. I must have taken 25 jigsaw puzzles to a senior day center. And they were thrilled because those clients love to put puzzles together. And that gave them a lot I of I cleared money. out a yeah. whole shelf in my attic. Right. <laughs> and and for, if you're, you know, looking for write-up places, a lot of places can, you know, mm -hmm. give you a letter, this is what you donate. Now, you estimate the value right. uh, for tax purposes. And, again, that's an individual thing, but, you know, I usually use, like, garage sale prices, prices. or something. Right. Books are easy to get rid of. And the one thing with books I have a few books, and I think Stephen limits it, my son, limits it to 10 books for them. Total. Total in their house. For all of them. No, just no, no for, for them. The for, children are right, little have books, books. But, okay. you know, but it's just for he and Callie. Um, he keeps a few books that he reads again every year, but most of the stuff he does is digital. But that's, that's still different. I know, I, I know still, that's different. That's a young I still people's thing. I have to touch the pages. I, but do you read, uh, what kind of books do you but like But I to have read? read some digital books. Right. I, and, and it's different, but I have been able to It's good that. when we travel. I like yeah. to take digital it's, books yeah. when we travel because, you know, one tiny reader compared to taking a suitcase full of paperbacks that it's, you read and leave and right. that's, do that. So, um, different, different way to think of things. But most of us have a lot of books we will never read again mm -hmm. or we've not read. We get them or... And we think we're going to, so we keep hanging on, them. on to that. Think, you know, so I'm really, that's something. And when I, you go to McKay's or some of those places where you buy and sell used books and stuff, and you come up with another load, then I immediately went in and I brought home like 25 books because I'm reading a series. I got rid of 30. So it's that one in, one out. That's mm -hmm. another principle of this. It's a different mindset. Yeah. And if you're trying to pare down, don't keep going to the store. I've really purposefully tried to stay away from the malls mm -hmm. and those things. It's like if you're trying to lose weight, do not drop by the Krispy Kreme when the hot right. Lincoln sign is on. Oh, just do <laughs> right. not do that. It, it's too tempting. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you know you're one of those and you like to have things stored up, and I have a gift chef and stuff so I can get to, but I pared that down, and I've been trying to go through my gift closet mm -hmm. and go ahead and gift those things, mm -hmm. you know, so that I can buy fresh. Right. Or think through, think about not giving stuff. I mean, we have 11 grandchildren. Our grandchildren have so many toys, you know, depending on which family you can't walk through because of their toys. Do they need more toys at Christmas and birthdays? Or do they need something else? Well, the other, and I know they don't like socks and underwear. I understand that. And, you know, it's not saying you can't give that, but think about the storage that it requires and things and, and that we need to teach our children to get rid of. We don't need to keep the baby toys if the child is five years old. Mm -hmm. And if you're planning another baby, get the baby toys out, put them up if you have room for that. Save them. And things change from baby to baby. Mm -hmm. I'm really working on my daughter who has, now she has a little girl. <laughs> She's got two boys and she saved all her boy clothes. And now I said, Susan, this baby's not going to wear much of that. And the other thing, as children outgrow stuff and they do so quickly, just keep a box or something somewhere so as soon as you know that you know you put on and they they're like this in it the pajamas they can't stretch their mm -hmm. little feet out because those feety pajamas are just, just too, too short, short. <laughs> um 
go ahead as soon as you wash them, put them in that giveaway box or you know trade off you know there's always somebody at church having a new right. baby that would love swaps now one thing we have because we have let's see out of our 11 grandchildren eight of them are boys so the boys clothes are being passed down and passed down mm -hmm. and passed down in, and it's the wonderful yeah I mean, and, and and my son has a little bo two boys that are about two years apart, and my daughter has boys. So I see the things that you know Chris's children wore and their own Julie's children, you know, and it's wonderful. It saves a lot of money. Oh yeah. And, and then when she finishes, she passes them down to James, mm -hmm. the the littlest boy in right. the family. <laughs> and you know, if they're decent, it, it what's left. Yeah. yeah, but just just make yourself, you know, if you wear something, you take it off. Said I just don't ever want to wear that again. I wash it and I immediately put it in the giveaway box mm -hmm. to get rid of, get out of the house box. But then how many of us hang it back up and say, well, I don't know, I'll think about that later. That's the point. Yeah. Again, that's, it's a that's mindset. The re, that's the re, retooling the our brain, you know, to yeah. think about not. Um, not. I just have all kinds of books because I really like books and these are these are some of mine I'm not going to plan to get rid of at this point because I'm still into this. Right. This is the last one I've just finished reading, The Joy of Less, and it's called A Minimalist Guide to Declutter, Organize, and Simplify. And it is, these probably are my two favorite, The, the Joy of Less and, and Joshua Becker's The More of Less. Because again, it talks about your mindset. Uh, and the minimalist guide to declutter, organize, and simplify. And I, <laughs> one of the hard things, she's got a, I shared that with Helen earlier. I want to see if I find that thing. This is her method, and I don't know if, if we can focus in on that or not. It's a streamline method to help you. There, there we go. Okay. Just I, I just hold, hold it still. still. That's hard. And she suggests, and this is, again, Francine J. that wrote that book. You start over. This is what we talked about, taking mm -hmm. everything out of a particular room if that's what you're working on or the drawer. You don't have to do a whole room. You can do a drawer, but take it all out. Yeah. And then throw away the old stuff that's, you clean out your makeup drawer. Yeah. That stuff goes out of, it's not good after a while. Uh, start over and take everything out as you put back in. And then have, you know, three piles. And people call them different things. She happens to call them trash, treasure, or transfer. A lot of stuff is obviously trash. Mm -hmm. Just throw it away. Don't bestow that on anybody else. And don't think twice. Right. Just do it. You know, those holly panties you think, oh, well, throw them away. And panties aren't that expensive. Uh, treasure. Now, the hardest part, and we'll talk about a little bit sentimental things, but something that you really love and you want to be out and where you can see mm -hmm. it and enjoy it. Save that. And then transfer, that means you're going to give it away to somebody else. And it certainly, like I have a lot of children, grandchildren, if there's something they want, they get first dibs on it. But if they don't, then I just put it in the giveaway pile. Mm -hmm. And then depending on your personality, you might need to get that box out right away. Like you said, you bought a box on your way into town. Mm -hmm. So when you, you fill up your box, next time you're going near wherever you want to donate it, take it. And the, this one, the reason for each, each item should have a reason. Why do we have... Ski clothes, if we haven't been skiing in 20 years, why are we holding on to those? Can you even still get in them? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I did get rid of my ski pants. Uh, and I, you know, but uh, there's got to be a reason. And do we need, you know, five egg beaters? You know, those old fashioned egg beaters mm -hmm. where you turn the handle? The handle. I still mm -hmm. have one of them, but that's more of a have, keepsake. Right. I but have I don't. One. Yeah. Anyway, but, and, and when you really are moving down, downsizing for a, a lot of folks at a certain age, they downsize so they can go into a condo or something. Mm -hmm. um, there should be a reason for each item you're deciding to keep. Now that maybe someday I might possibly use it, even though I've never used it in the last 10 years that I've had it. There's a lot of those kind of things. Um, everything in its place. That's the hardest thing for people. And my daughter, my oldest daughter, she said that. The kids say, I don't know, there's no place for it. You have to designate a place for everything. This is where the sports gear goes. It could be your garage or your carport or some basket or bucket. Make mm -hmm. it simple. The usually is for people to throw it in, and they just know. Then you know that's where the, all the balls are or whatever. Right. But a place for everything, and 
and then use it. Again, a sweep before you go to bed, putting stuff, taking back to where it's supposed to go. Um, all surfaces clear. Now that's hard, especially if you're a collector. But I don't like to dust. I don't either. So I, I have made dust. a much more of an effort to clear off like the mantle. Mm -hmm. uh, your kitchen counters. How much stuff do we have sitting out? And is it just like cutesy little stuff or is it stuff you really use? Mine is stuff I use. Well, and more. I, I think so too. Now, I have a big mixer and mm -hmm. it's heavy and I'm not going to drag it out and I use it a lot. Mm -hmm. So that is consequently something I, and I have shelf space for it. I mean, I have yes. counter space, but that makes a huge difference. But look at, look at your surfaces and if they are so piled up, you can't even see the surface. There's a problem there and that may be where you want to start. Have, have you noticed, not kitchen, but have you noticed, I, I watch HGTV. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, I do too. Know, changing, you know, all that things they redo. But have you noticed that people, I don't know if it's just these houses, that people now store their clothes on top of their uh, dresser and on top of their chest of drawers now? Have you no, seen No, I that? haven't noticed that. I've been noticing that lately. I mean, their clothes are just stacked up on top. Is that after they've been redone or is no, that before they come that's when they're showing the the before the befores the clothes are just stacked and you know up why and I'm that going, is okay they don't have room in their drawers to put them so they just stack them I mean, they're stacked up on top like yeah. that they never the bother to put them in the, and and that's and that's so that that's just so bothers you yes it does but, but, but if you think about those but, but that means their drawers are too full mm -hmm. they've got too much stuff or, if they don't have room in their storage area to do that pay attention when, okay, I, when you're well I, I mean those, I know things are just really cluttered and stuff and and the clothes are just stacked up on tops on the surfaces yeah yeah I mean I, I've seen it mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all surfaces clear again these are ideals and it works now one thing I did bring a module that's a suggestion again after you've done your decluttering really is to have modules and I brought this just just to share as a possibility uh, you have different uh, things. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Anne's gonna hold this for just a minute. We need to go to a break. Okay, sure. When we come back from our break, she's gonna show you a module that you can put together and get started for yourself in reducing your clutter <laughs> in your mind, too. So stay with us after this break. We're on the air 24 7. A North Georgia taste of heaven. A fun place to be And we're your family You see TV For over four decades, your neighborhood ShopRite supermarkets have been the standard for quality and service. Locally owned means you'll find a smile on every aisle. Best meat at the best prices. Farm fresh produce. Weekly specials on a variety of products. Get the ShopRite seal of approval. You can't shop wrong at ShopRite. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is right now. The same rules apply to financial success. Saving money is the first step towards financial independence. And at the Bank of Lafayette, we have an investment account for every situation. How much you save is not nearly as important as establishing a regular pattern of saving and placing of your money aside in a safe and secure place. Whimsical thinking and immediate gratification can rob you of a financially secure future and a safe and comfortable retirement. At the Bank of Lafayette, we can help you choose an investment account that will help you reach your immediate, short-term and long-term goals. The one rule that always applies across every economic timeline and condition, the sooner you begin saving, the faster your money will grow. Bank with confidence at the Bank of Lafayette, your hometown bank for more than 110 years. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC.
After Rosewood Assisted Living and Memory Care, we have everything your senior could want in a safe, comfortable residence. Several levels of services include short-term housing for weekends or longer, assisted living where the staff provides a watchful eye while preserving your loved one's privacy and dignity, or independent living where residents are able to take care of themselves yet have access to all amenities and a sense of security. And the Rosewood on Battlefield Parkway specializes in memory care for patients of Alzheimer's or dementia. Call today for a tour of our campus. Metathrift Pharmacy, located at 324 West Patton Street in Lafayette, across from the ShopRite. Metathrift Pharmacy provides prescription drugs, including compounded prescriptions. They also have diabetic supplies, including custom diabetic shoes. They have lift chairs, potty chairs, shower seats, and other durable medical equipment. Metathrift Pharmacy in Lafayette has a friendly, well-trained staff that will help you with your drugstore needs, whether you're on the phone or in the store. You may also leave your refill request on their automated phone system available 24 hours a day. Make them your choice for your pharmacy needs. Metathrift Pharmacy, 706-638-3114. We're on the air 24-7. A North Georgia taste of heaven. A fun place to be. And we're your family. You see it. We're back now. Ann Kuzniak joins me. We're talking about the minimalist concept of living and or just if you don't want to talk about it in those terms, we'll just talk about <laughs> Oh, a lot of my friends can't pronounce that. <laughs> it's just doing more with less. That's right. Just having less so you don't feel so overwhelmed and sometimes I just feel like you don't know where to start. There's too much stuff. Right. And consequently, we don't start. That's right, because you're overwhelmed, you're overwhelmed if you go in this begin room. With. If you, you're overwhelmed if you go in, in the next room. room, so you just don't. And that's one, one, one of the, the folks I've read said, you know, start in the bathroom. That's a small space, and that's an escape space, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless it's the only one in the whole family, <laughs> which is what it used to be. Right. But one of the suggestions that uh, the Francine J made, the one that the joy of less, was to have modules for things if you don't have a lot of space, now you may not have a dedicated office in your home, and a lot of people don't. Now, even at offices now, they're getting to where you don't have an office. You have a, tables around that you can bring your laptop and just make mm -hmm. that your space. Right. But she said, like, if, if, if you don't, and you, you know, traditionally go to your kitchen table, your dining room table mm -hmm. to pay bills or whatever, mm -hmm. you might want to make, like, a module like, for bill paying. And I just made this one up real quick. A little plastic bucket. I like it because it has little... Handles. I like those with the locking. Yeah, uh, and and just the things you would absolutely have to have to pay bills, some envelopes. I have two sizes, and that's something we could learn to just use one size. And when I use these up, I won't get the second size. Stamps, just what I get. Them. Some name, some name labels or whatever, and some pens and pencils. Uh, now, depending, you might want to put a little calculator in there. Mm -hmm. um, you might even stick your bills in there as you come. I have a place that I do. There's a lot of things you can do and try to, but that's something you could take. Okay, take it to your dining room table, do it. This could work for taxes too. Put all your tax junk in one place. Mm -hmm. Tax junk, that's what I call it. Yes. I, and I then as you that. work on you, you pull it out as you need it to work on your taxes. I keep a file folder in my desk mm -hmm. all year. Anything related to taxes, as soon as it comes, I put in there. Right. So consequently, when it's time to do my taxes, I have all the documents. I have to organize them a little bit. But they're all but they're together. All together. Yes. Anytime we receipt for something you donate or tax property taxes car taxes all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff just automatically goes in there so it's no problem and when, when it's all time those to do things start coming through the mail yeah save this for your taxes yeah. that goes right it in goes there in that file i keep so. one of those too and that that really is a help yeah and and, that, and then again and when it's time to do taxes i generally do mine you know on my computer you know with the tax software mm -hmm. and just get that stuff out get it organized and just start filling in the blanks mm -hmm. and Taxes aren't that awful. I keep, uh, I used to keep separate folders with receipts and separate folders, but now I just keep them together. I just put it all in one pile. Right. And I got some of the, um, the pretty boxes, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of those that you can buy that are already pretty, that have folding kind of magnetic uh, lids that uh -huh, hold uh -huh. down. And I just keep all of my receipts in there. And you can find a, a corner if you don't have a place, a shelf. If you want to put them on a shelf, they're attractive. Uh, right. You know, and um, 
and I do the same thing for my bills. My bills, as they come in, they all go in that box, so I know where my bills are. I don't lose my bills. Well, and, and because yeah, you, you need one yeah. place. That's extremely right. important. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been working on that with one of my children. Trying, okay, if any mail comes in, and sometimes the kids will pick it up when they're coming up from the school bus and bring. It needs to go in one place. Right. And then at some point during the week, go through it, open it all. The stuff that's just junk, junk mail, I immediately, I have a waste basket that I recycle all that stuff. Mm -hmm. If it like magazine offers and stuff like that, that you, you know you're not, just don't even open it. Put right. it right in there. Don't get tempted. And this right. is the time you notice they send all that stuff mm -hmm. for you to buy because you're going to be holed in because of the bad weather right. and all. But one of the things I've tried to do is look at what's coming into my house. If you can get online statements for a lot of your credit cards and things like that, if you do banking online, or do, do it that way. And then you don't have all that paper to deal with. Um, magazines. I have really tried, when my magazine subscriptions end, tried to stop, quit taking them. Stop it. Well, they're getting so small now, till, uh, so thin, that... Uh, they're like pamphlets now anyway. 7712, go ahead with your question. Uh, yes, where, could you tell me where the uh, attic treasure is located? Y yes, ma'am. It's located in the um, shopping center right beside Meta Thrift Pharmacy. Do you know where that is in Lafayette? Oh, it's in Lafayette. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. what that was <laughs> i started blinking at us and then she knew it was yes a that, that's when the phone calls come in and, so. and perhaps wherever you're you know you're living you know there are places that will accept donations right and right. you know if you if i've taken stuff and my husband likes to get tax receipts for stuff i always itemize what i'm taking mm -hmm. and then attach that list keep me a list and I give them the list and the stuff and then it's really easy for them to write me a receipt right and, you know, the other thing I do is take pictures. Um, I do that sometimes, but I never print pictures. Well, I don't, but I have it if I should need it. Right. You know, yeah, I've that, that picture is worth a thousand words. So. One of the things I found when I'm shopping for clothes, I did this because I like to wear capris in the spring and summer, and I laid out all my capris in the current size on my bed, you know, just and took a picture so I'd know what colors I had. Mm -hmm. So if I were somewhere and there was – this was – really before I started trying to minimize, then you said, I need a, I need a, a navy pair because mm -hmm. we travel a lot and I like you to can't like remember. You can't remember. And, but I oh, yeah, I have, or I see a good bargain, you know, mm -hmm. so that's over $4. I thought, do I have one? Oh, yeah, I have one that color. I don't need to buy that. Right. Just something simple like that. It, uh, I, I use my phone right. pictures for a lot of things yeah. like that to help me recall well, when I'm trying to send my husband to the grocery store for something, so I take a picture of this is what I want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, it's easier. Mm -hmm. You can find it. And, of course, then they change the packaging or Yeah, the whatever. colors or the Yeah, but, the, the you know, this is what we're looking for. Yeah, right. So uh, that's a great time saver, don't you think? It is. And if you need something at the hardware store, take a picture of the old one or the... Or well, I'll, if I yeah. can, I'll take it with me because that's yeah. just, I say, I need... <laughs> if it won't come off, though, you, <laughs> right. you take a picture of it and... Right. And, uh, they they are really pleased with that. So I like the idea, Anne, of taking one thing at a time because, you know, the, this is my personal experience. When you when you start pulling things out and undoing things, I mean, where they are, they're they're there. They're hidden, and you don't right. have to deal with them. But once you pull them out, you have to deal with. Right. The part that you're going to get rid of, the part that you're going to throw away, and those that you've pulled out that you, you have to keep. put back and right. keep. So you you do have to deal with all of that in the time frame you have allotted. Right. So And depending on your schedule, you may not, you know, but spending maybe even if you're working and have family, half a day on a Saturday organizing. The thing she said, particularly with clothing, mm -hmm. especially if you have it, like, and when our kids, you know, you take over different closets mm -hmm. in the house, too. Mm -hmm. You get it all together in one place, and you see how much stuff you have mm -hmm. and how, you know, how it many, really convicts you. How many you. closets you have? Is that what we you're saying? We don't know how much stuff that you've just scattered <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. And, and if your drawers are overflowing and they're not neat, then 
you need to clean out the drawers. Mm -hmm. You know, how many t-shirts do we actually need that we wear around? You know, I have a few things that are paint clips. When I redid my my chest of drawers, and I have like one, two, three drawers on each side, and the little one in the middle. You know, that's right. a little shallow one. So I put my, you know, socks in one, pantyhose in one, and underwear in another one. That just the top ones. And um, Marie Kondo, the Japanese one, talks about folding stuff. Now, I, I want to share this because I don't know what I do with that. Where'd I hide that over here? T-shirts. Even my husband's doing this. This is wonderful. Just a plain old T-shirt. And you lay it flat like you do and fold it. I fold mine into thirds. And then I found if I fold it, double it over like this. I had to look this up. You can find anything on the internet now. Mm -hmm. To find out what you're stuff, and then I fold it in half. Then your T-shirt, you stack them in your drawer like this, yeah. like I, files. Oh, like files now. Like I files, fold, not flat. I fold that way, but then you you, then stack, you stack them up. I got all of my shirts in one drawer. Really? And you can see right, like this one happens to be, you know, when I volunteer at the Salvation Army, I can I know which shirt that is. You know, you can see most because most of them have the logo mm -hmm. right, and you can see, and and you can rotate them or whatever, but it's. You would be surprised. And you have to figure out your depth of your drawer and right. fold them uh, to fix yours. I used to always fold them in thirds and have them stacked up, but then you have to pick everything. This way you just pull it up like a file folder. And most drawers, I mean, Are that's, this the, yeah. That, and my husband loves his. He's got all of his running well, now shirts. I really stuff. like that because I, I already folded like half that, and half but you again, stack them. but I stacked and them And then you have way. to pick them up, and chances mm -hmm. are when you wash stuff and you put right on top, you, you keep tending to wear the same things. Right. This way you might put him at the back of the drawer and you mm -hmm. know and he said he's been really rotating his shirts a mm -hmm. lot more since he you know he did that now that socks is, is another thing now i roll my socks that, okay she that doesn't the, want you to twist or okay. i just roll is that well and that would work if that but the one because of the depth of my drawers mm -hmm. i fold mine in thirds okay and again it's just oh and stacking then, them and like then, that okay and you could get those little, I think I haven't tried it. I meant to before I came, but it, those little refrigerator shelves you can pull out. I keep my yogurt and stuff in mm -hmm. one. And it might have been that, or you can, sometimes drawers come with little dividers. Mm -hmm. Or I'm thinking you can make some. But just stack them so I have all my black ones in one, my mm -hmm. white ones, my short socks. My... It's so simple. Yeah. And it doesn't take the time. I always match my socks. Now, some people don't. Oh, I, I, I can't always, stand that. I have to be able to grab it and go. Me too. I, and I this, this works. I now, I hadn't worked, convinced my husband that he can do that because he likes his tie together. But, and she talks about how it hurts clothes because mm -hmm. it I stretches do, them out. Yeah, I used to do that, but I don't You know, we like this and it stretches yeah, them out. Yeah, I, I don't do that anymore. I roll mine. And rolling would roll. work. Mm -hmm. and, but that way you'd probably have to put some on top. You know. Yeah. But this way, it's uh, with the thirds that I found. But I like it's the just third. like a little it's file drawer. Little, mm -hmm. And I really I emptied one whole bottom drawer of just shirts. I got rid of some, you know, mm -hmm. t-shirts. You know, it's probably from a race twenty years ago or something. Not that I raced, right. but I always volunteer and help. Uh, but that was one of those just aha, and right. that really helped. And that's you can open great, it, and I, I, I thought about taking a picture, but I didn't know how we could show it. Of my drawer, you open the drawer, I can see exactly what t-shirts are there. Pick them out, and I can just go. And when I'm packing, and we travel for long times at a time. Right. We go overseas for a lot of things. We'll be going for a 30-day trip. So you don't take 30 days worth of clothes, different clothes. Do you, you pack bring. that way? Well, do I don't you? do it in my suitcase because right. it, it won't work. But I just it's so easy to see what you have. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, and one of the things that I, I do before we travel is I always try on when I'm talking about carrying, because we change sizes or whatever, mm -hmm. and you want comfortable clothes mm -hmm. when you're traveling. You don't want spe specific clothes, depending on where you're going. And this particular trip we're, we're heading out for is one week is in a very cold climate, and the rest is in a warm climate. So that's a challenge. So that's And you have a 50-pound suitcase, and you don't want it full of 50 pounds when you head over there because you want to be able to bring stuff home and i'm not one that throws away stuff i don't have it i don't like to throw my clothes away you know some right. people do that say they take their old underwear and they just throw it away yeah you know? right buy new ones but um uh, but we're all different so i that has helped a lot so how many how many pairs of 
pants will you take for I hadn't started packing that I've got my card table out I get it out a couple weeks ahead and start getting the passport and all that stuff Mm -hmm. laid out the paperwork and then I do all the pills and things like that that you have because you can't there's no Walmarts where we go right there's no place to go buy stuff right so you have to make sure you take but you don't take excess because it bogs you down well you've got to carry all those suitcases Mm -hmm. and what in most trips that we go on you're allowed one suitcase plus your carry-on that's it for a month and some people carry smaller I'm always amazed there's always master packers and I've met people who've traveled all over the world and they are masters at packing that you do a lot of I found that dark pants work well and patterned shirts because if you spill a little something on them they don't show and you I take stuff in fact I bought a little clothesline I'm going to take with me this time so that I can and I'll wash and Mm -hmm. hang up stuff but you have to have things that are washable no irons most of these places you're not going to iron stuff Mm -hmm. so take stuff that's washing things that are not going to wrinkle I mean you can just dry and wash and dry that's just the way it is you're also on trips with people you don't know you never see them again so what difference does it make (laughs) they won't remember you had that that spot on your your blouse anyway and I would take it back and spot wash it or whatever but that's interesting it's minimalist so if we're a minimalist it it doesn't uh, I mean we're going to have a we're going to have to give up that idea that the one with the most stuff wins. Is and you cannot take it with you. This is what right. we were talking about. Yeah. And your kids don't want it. That's the biggest issue. Uh, again, with four children and 11 grandchildren, we have a house full of stuff. So I have pared it down. I've got tons. I had it all organized because I like to do that. But big old clear basket. I like clear plastic. I don't like putting mm-hmm. stuff in cardboard because rodents love cardboard. And right. it just disintegrates. So I put it in so I've got a ton of those, and I went upstairs and recently and matched all of my empty boxes. I'm going to take it to my daughter's house when I go down there to spend a little bit of time and help her a little bit. But mainly I'd rather get rid of. But right. the stuff she has in cardboard, I'd mm-hmm. rather put it in clear plastic. Clear plastic, yeah. and then you can see. And clear plastic you can see. That's what I like you, about it. You can yeah. see that it's kids' clothes or kids' toys or whatever. Right, and seeing it is, is really great because... You know, if you're looking for something, and well, you and I label it always, but still, mm-hmm. it's just it's seeing easier. it still. You know, like boys' better. clothes, size right. two or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you can, when you're through with those, you put them back and pass them on or whatever. Right. I, I don't know. I just I've always done that, but I I do find having a place when you discard something, you said, I really don't like that blouse, or I really don't yeah. like those pair of pants anymore. Yeah. They're just uncomfortable or mm-hmm. whatever. Put them in that get rid of a box, wash them, and then put them there. and So they're ready to go. When you're going somewhere, they have a clothing dryer, they have a book dryer. And if you have children's books laying around your house, there is such a need for children's books in every community. We're really trying to get children's books in the hands of families who don't have books. Yeah. And I had bookools of those. We read a lot to our kids when they were little. And I'm... I'm really pared that down a lot i've donated so many books to these book drives or literacy movements and Mm -hmm. all kinds of things if you have a a need to find a place to get rid of stuff i'm sure helen can help you find local sources oh yeah but children's books paperbacks if you you know some people read romance novels or whatever and we like we like killer thriller type adventure type books but we're trying to use the library a lot more I mean, I don't because we have a beautiful library. Well, and every every community has a library. I'm not going to read those books, but once, the the newest, the latest, mm-hmm. and they're what twenty five dollars now to buy them, right. a book, and you read it once in, in a day or two, and then you stick it on your shelf forever, and then you have to do something with it. Or your your heirs when yeah. they clean out. That's what I'm really trying to clean out before. Right. <laughs> before my kids have They'll to deal with it. They'll be saying really bad things about me. <laughs> what was she thinking? Why does she still have yeah. all this stuff? So, we, uh, you know, I think we can all find a place where we can start. If it's in the bathroom, or if it's in a just your a drawer, or, or a small drawer, books, or a sock whatever. drawer, or Something. books, somewhere we can find a place where we can start because it. If you have done any, it is freeing. It makes you feel so good when you just. That's why I got rid of those cookbooks. I didn't have to. It was. It lightens your burden. You just feel right. psychologically lighter. Right. 
You don't have to deal with it. So think about how it would feel if you did your whole everything you own if you just yeah and and, and you can do it and this is what marie kind of that i'm doing it gradually yeah sometimes i tackle the attic certain but i'm certain like like those puzzles and Mm -hmm. kids toys that are still up in the attic and i'll bring them down let the kids play with them and then they get through with them i'll pass them on right so find some place and start start. because the important thing is just to get started started. you got to get started and you'll find the what works for you and so if you start one day you'll finish right well and you get a buddy if that's a hard yeah. part you know how when i was a kid we'd go down to my neighbors and it was so much more fun to clean kathy's house than my house mm-hmm. she had different stuff right. and it's not personal to you get a buddy that can come right. in and help you right i think that's a good idea and if you start one day you'll finish well i'll be better yeah, we'll just, feel better you'll be in this the we'll other. have more time to have fun well that's the point you yeah get, you get rid of stuff and then you can concentrate on things that really matter but if your your living space is so cluttered that it bothers you to sit down you can't relax and enjoy it you kids don't have a place to make puzzles or do stuff like that and you don't have any place to put out the good stuff because right. the junk's taking up all that's right you can't space. use the good stuff because of that yes definitely. rick says we got nope. <laughs> close oh, we've used up all our time and we hope that you've taken these tips and you'll begin to evaluate your situation and you'll begin to be a minimalist in your own way well just getting rid of excess stuff stuff just too much stuff. Not your friends, just too your much stuff. stuff. That's right. <laughs> and thank you so much for oh, coming welcome. and being with me today. We hope you'll be back again next week for what women and men need to know. <laughs> thank you, Anne. Okay, thanks. Okay.